Hello, Ray Phoenix here. Welcome to Let's Play Ape Escape Part 14. So this time around, we're still in Spectre's Castle, Space Castle he's talking for, and we're gonna go after some remaining monkeys that are still hiding around in here. So we have this screwing thing that's going around, still wants to destroy us, it's still bent on destroying us as it should. Oh, look, it's nice. It's gonna give us a little break right there, and look at that, just replenish most of our health. That's kind of nice of that thing. So you see, we still have some of Spectre's Space Age monkeys here, trying to run away, trying to stop. He doesn't want us to get, to get caught, obviously he wants to want to get caught, but we did. We caught him anyways. So, you know, what's he going to do about that? So let's go now and find the Spectre, the... Because we, we know where Spectre is now. He got rid of... We found a way to open up that painting that uh, that was on the wall that reveals where he is. Well, it's an elevator to where he is. So we're going to go in there and we're going to finally fight Spectre and get this over with, finally. Ooh, a one-up. You know there's no shortage of one-ups in this game, right? Man, I got like over 10, almost like 10 lives in this one level alone. Since when did blast levels of games ever give gamers, ever give players a lot of lives? I never played a game that gave a gamer so many lives or so much stuff and, and that's the last level. That's pretty impressive, actually. Well, impressive if you're, if you're not that good of a gamer, that is, or if you suck at the game. We keep gaining so many lives because we're good at this game. We're awesome at this game. We're masters at this game. We're, we're like some of the best. I, I don't know how, how I'd rank. I don't even know what the world records are for this game overall. I wonder if there's a database somewhere that confirms the world records. Even then, not everything gets gets recorded. So how would you even know if it really was a world record or not at all? Is there a section in the Guinness Book of World Records for, for scores in Ape Escape or for times in Ape Escape or things like that? Well, we caught that monkey. I was playing billiards there in that other room. So there's only two more monkeys left this entire level. But one of them's in a hard to reach area, and the other one is in a place we can't even get to right now as is, so we're just gonna go at and, you know, fight against Spectre and finally get this over with. Spectre is gonna be the next monkey in our in our net, right? <laughs> so let's go to where that painting was up on the wall and we're going to ride the elevator up to Spectre's battle, or the Spectre boss battle. This is gonna be epic. This is gonna be us finally going against the most evilest, mo smartest monkey in the entire known world. And look at that, if, in case we haven't gotten any more 1-ups already, this gave us number 1-up. Let's go and take on this Spectre. We're gonna fight him, we got our weapons ready, and we're ready to catch this Spectre. And then, hmm, where is he? Oh, I see, there's a robot body there, but I don't really see Spectre. Where is Spectre? Where are you, Spectre? He's probably scared, he's probably, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, he's probably scared for the of us because, you know, he knows what we've done to him. He wasn't expecting us to make it this far, but we made it this far, so he probably figures we made it this far, you're probably gonna beat him. So he's just gonna run away like a whiny coward, and, you know, just gonna, um, you know, wait for us to actually find him and capture him. But I don't think he's gonna do that. What's wrong with you? I can't believe what a mess you made. You didn't have to blow everything apart. I told you the door would be open. I only wanted to talk to you. That's why I invited you in. So what do you think of my castle? Do you like it? This castle is the most powerful fortress ever constructed. It will be so easy to conquer the world. It really is perfect, isn't it? What are you saying? Are you out of your mind? Just stop this crazy plan already! Why don't you stop fighting me and join me instead? You know, like your friend did. No way! I won't be controlled by you! Well, we'll see about that. With my new powers and my superior intelligence, it would be so easy to put you under my control. You could fight it all you wanted. Be able to resist. Like this! Ow! Is that painful? Give it up! Join me! Unless you do, the pain you're feeling will only get worse! No! 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 I, I won't! You really think you can fight and beat me? You're no match for my powers! I don't want to! I won't! Wow! What's going on? My powers! Why aren't they working? I'll tell you why. What? Power alone isn't the true strength. Mm. Well, something like that. 
I can't believe this is happening. I have no use for you now. Get out of here. Hey, wait. Take this. It's like a little anime battle we watched over there. It's now time for the final battle. You see, he's moving a sprite around, or he's shooting us stuff like a first-person shooter. I think that sprite came right out of a first-person shooter. And he's still giving us health because that's a spectre. He's one of the nicest villains you'll ever come across. So just give him a couple of hits. Just run up to him in the first, and he's in the first-person perspective. We're not actually playing as him as you can see. We're still controlling Spike, which is actually quite interesting. I was like first person, but yeah, we're not actually playing as the person that's being used in first person. That makes sense. I'm seeing it from Spectre's perspective. Just gonna run up to him. He says this form is really easy. We keep hitting him with our lightsaber, and it's eventually gonna crack his shield or pierce his shield. I just want to make this better than a lightsaber. There are some types of shields that lightsabers can't break through. So, yeah, our stun club is pretty good in that sense. I mean, this is kind of like the final boss in Sonic 2, where you have to let it target something else, and then you could run away from it and then give it a good hit. A good whack right there. Keeps wanting to lock on to us, so it sucks at locking on. You think Spectre could afford better lock on technology? So, there, there go. That's the first form of this fight was just defeated. So that to that robot we saw earlier is for it's the second phase of his boss. It's kind of odd that Spectre would just expose the second phase of his boss battle to us before I even go to fight Spectre the first time around. Kind of already ruined the surprise by doing that. <laughs> by having just parked there. In theory, we could have just walked up to it and destroyed it and vandalized it so he had nothing to go to. But I don't think the game's engine would allow us to do that or the game's programming code and so that's you know, the way these games are set up to be made. They need to be played a certain way. And I doubt the game would let us do that, because what would be the fun in that, right? If we could just vandalize Spectre's robot and have the game be over at like, just like that. Same reason why games don't let you switch, don't let you go to the final level of the game without having to, oh, just right on the fly, without having to play for any of the level. What kind of game, or, or any of the other levels in the game, what kind of game lets you do that? Pretty much no game in history ever lets you do that. One of the only games in history I ever played before that ever let you do that was Boxman, some crappy game that I played on that mp4 player i got for christmas in 2006. some people report that boxman came with a few tvs they bought in the early 2000s the game that comes on tv the game those dated predated smart tvs by quite a bit too it's interesting it's a game you could play within the tv that's actually part of the tv itself i never really knew they did that for old tvs but apparently they did strangely remember seeing that somewhere a long time ago so he broke off both with spectre's arms so all he has to do left is just open up his mouth and shoot energy at us there and he exposes his weak point right on the part of his body or the middle of his body or whatever where, where the body that is. And so there, he's going to send another like large, powerful shot. It's going to break part of the floor, as you can see there. I think he's going to send out another one. No, no, he doesn't send out another one yet. But we there. You see, you tell he's in the red, so you know his health is really low. Because all bosses, you know, they flash... They, uh, what was, yeah, they all flash red when they, when they get turned, their health goes low. Look at that, this time around, he's destroying two of the plant panels. That's not going to stop us from, you know, wanting to defeat him, because we can still defeat him like that. I think we just did it. Miss destroyed his robot thing right there, and now, ooh. You ruined everything! If it weren't for you, everything would be perfect! Spectre! Put a stop to this now! I'm taking you back to the amusement park. You must be joking! You're not taking me anywhere! I'll never go back! I'm never going back to that rotten place! You listen, and you listen good! I will return! And when I do, I'll destroy you and the world as you know it! So you better be ready, because next time, I won't fail! Wait! You seem so sure of yourself. And of course, he runs away and disappears. What a coward he is. We know Spectre's a coward. All the greatest villains in history are cowards, right?
They all are. So now that we got through that level, obviously Natalie is still typing around on Discord, and she's going to show us all the monkeys. We probably caught the majority of all the monkeys in that one level. And now there's going to be some more plot. So we expect. You can see Spectre's castle is still in space, and it's going to remain in space until the end of time, pretty much, because he says it's the greatest fortress ever built. So something like that should stay in space and be left and remain untouched and never get used or never have to be touched. It's like a historic landmark. A historic landmark in space, that is. I see our friends are waiting for us, as you can see. They're waiting, thinking, oh no, is Spike going to come back alive? Or is he going to come back in a bunch of pieces or something like that, in a bunch of mutilated pieces? They're about to find out. They're waiting for the truth. And oh look, the sun is rising. And just as the sun is rising, we come running after them. Because, you know, it's very um, cinematic or climactic that way, wherever you say it. Or just go running after them. Hey, I'm Spike. Yep, Spike is back, as you probably guess. And of course, he's gonna want to reunite with his good old buddy. And yep, this is a still image of a shot. I'm gonna put a pit print and put in a picture frame. Probably put it on my end table or something like that. Of the what's possibly the greatest moment in Ape Escape history, right there. The from the scene from the normal ending of the original Ape Escape. This is considered to be the normal ending of the original Ape Escape. After we go back and capture all the monkeys, and then we get catch finally catch Spectre for the final time in the game, we're gonna see the game's special ending. Ooh, this game has a special ending. Both of the endings, this game, the normal ending and the special ending, they're pretty much told similar to that of the Sega Genesis ending. Seems like Streets of Rage had the same kind of uh, the same kind of thing where it would show it would show still images of what's going on, while at the same time it shows the credits, like showing the credits and the ending at the same time. I'll play some really cool, catchy music. This game did have some influence from Sega Genesis games, too. We're looking at some of it right now, as I just said. They see Spike and Jakers cleaning up the lab. They're fooling around, having the time of their lives, while Natalie's getting angry at them, because it's kind of like her job to be angry at them. It's a job to be angry at Spike and Jake for just wanting to play around and have fun and do stuff, and, you know, all that crap. There's all sorts of people who worked on this game. Sochi Tirada did a really good job with the music. There's data programmers, there's sound effects people, there's movie effects. There's all kinds of people who went into the production of this game. They all deserve to, you know, get their, their spot in the limelight and to get their spot in the... So you see, they're replacing the signs. They're taking down the signs that advertise for Spectre stuff. And now they're going to... So it's now going to say, you know, what it said before. So they're trying to remove any any remnants of Spectre. Trying to repair so it doesn't look like Spectre was ever there. And then it keeps them on the screen for a pretty long time, too, so you have enough time to read the image fully. So it's good if you're a slow image reader. That's, it's okay, it's good. You don't need language to understand these endings. The best endings are told visually without the use of language or anything like that. And see, they're building that statue there, building a, some sort of statue, maybe they're, they're cleaning off a statue or something, some sort of monument statue. Looks like it could be a gold Japanese god or something like that. There's a statue in New York City that's similar to that. Of a, of some guy, this is some god that could regenerate his organs or something like that. And then there's statues of, well, the people that would be in this game, the heroes of this game. I'm sure they deserve statues. They're probably going to be built somewhere around there, too. And you see that kid that was, you know, his mom was freaking out and forcing to go in the bedroom earlier. Out now, and look, Bruce Cochran was one of the testers of this game. There's a character in Twisted Metal named after him. The guy that drives Thumper in the pink car. It looks like Homer Simpson's car in the Twisted Metal games. driven by someone named Bruce Cochran. And he was on the testers for the original Twisted Metal. He also seems to be on the testers for this game, too. Makes sense since they're all games made by Sony. It came out of the PS1. And also showing us a cityscape and with no signs of Spectre and no real things of Spectre anywhere. And they're, so, they're showing a perfectly normal looking, you know, cityscape. This this the... This, uh, the city from a distance, a scenic view, if you want to call it something like that. In the background, showing this looks like snow and some like psychedelic rainbow colored background. There's snow and everywhere. This is showing the voice credits now. I think afterwards, this is going to be pretty much, yeah, it's going to say the company that made this game, Sony Computer Entertainment Inc. Yeah, so that's pretty much it for this game, or at least for now that's it for this game. There's still a lot more we have to do before we, you know, see the special ending. A lot, really a lot more. Just Mostly just getting a new gadget and going back and exploring the levels again and finding stuff that we missed. That's about it.
Spectre will definitely be back. And when he is, I'm sure he'll do more evil. Professor, I'll go back and find Spectre. That's a good idea. But first, use the time station to return to the past and check each error for any remaining monkeys on the loose. We can't leave any of them wandering around. While you do that, I'll go back to the lab and track down Spectre. Then we'll find him and stop him for good. So yeah, that's pretty much what we're going to be doing for the rest of this game. This is Ray Phoenix signing out.